Hey guys, it's Chris with Nichols Retirement Empire. Well, you can see I'm riding down the highway of life right here. We are in traffic, or I am in traffic in Atlanta. And uh, I'm going to do a video. Got plenty of time right here. Why not? I'm going to do a video on why teachers quit. This is my second installment of why teachers quit administrators help. All right, because administrators can help. They can help the teacher feel less like quitting, <laughs> for, for lack of a better way to put it. And uh, the last video, I talked about a couple of things that they could do that would help the teachers out. So uh, here's a couple of other things that they can do. Uh, number one, first thing you can do is look for ways to make the teacher's job easier. And by that, what I mean is this, anytime you add something for them to do if it's a new thing for them to do and it just sounds like you know what we need to start doing this and you add something to their list of things to do take something away if you can't take something away that equals the amount of time this new thing is going to take then don't add it now what happens is sometimes we get these directives from the government and from the school district and all that that says you have to do this now and you don't have a choice, I understand that. I know that sometimes things get piled on and it's not our choice uh, for what gets piled on. But you need to understand that, you know, you may have been out of the classroom for the last 15 years and you don't remember what it's like. I, I never forgot that, but I do know that anytime I tried to add something, I knew I needed to take something away. And if I didn't take something away, then what would happen is something didn't get done that I said that they were also supposed to do. And I was the same way. Uh, but as an administrator, I literally could not do all the things they wanted me to do. There were too many things from the district office and from the school that, that I literally could not do each one of them exactly the way it was supposed to be done all the time. So the way I thought was, which one of these things is most likely to get me fired first? That one got my most attention. Then I would, you know, work my way down. But I prioritized things. And some of the stuff just kind of got shoved to the side and didn't really get done. You know and that's the bottom line that's just the way it is you did that's the way it is where you work people can only do so much stuff so you realize when you keep adding this stuff on for the teachers to do that that's something else that they're not doing so take something away anytime if you look you know in your building and you see hey here's you know we're doing this you know we have teachers performing a, a certain duty at the end of the day and every time I go by here, I notice there's no reason for this duty to be, this is a waste of everybody's time. Take it away. Look for things that you can eliminate out of the teacher's list of things to do. Always look for that. Anytime you can do that, you're gonna make them so much happier. You're gonna get a better performance out of the teachers because they're gonna have time to really focus on what it is they really need to be doing, which is teaching and taking care of the kids. But, you know, always keep in mind, what can I take away? What can I get rid of? How can I streamline their job? Because if you don't think like that, then things are gonna get piled on and piled on and piled on and it never stops. It never stops, just like in your job, it never stops. So try to think like that. So that's one thing you can do, all right? A second thing, <coughs> excuse me. A second thing you can do is be honest. Be honest with your teachers and the reason that is such a big deal is because we're not doing them a favor by not telling them the truth about things for example you know if you're doing observations and or you're not doing observations say you walk by their room just you know for whatever reason you're there to pick up a kid or whatever and you see something going on and you're like man that i don't have time to address that right now with you but if i was doing an observation you'd be in trouble tell them don't what don't avoid that conversation 
uh, you don't have to write them up. You don't have to, you know, whatever. You may want to document it for your purposes just so you remember that you did it. But uh, tell them, you know, let them know. Uh, I, I got an issue with this. I've got a problem. You know, I saw something that, you know, you know, if you got another administrator in the building and you know their pet peeve is this, and you walk through and you see them, you know, tell them, Miss so and so, if she comes in here, like, you know, I don't care, but she comes in here, she's going to write you up. <laughs> tell them, be honest. You know, don't keep it a secret. You know, I told Mikey, it's just like your discipline code when you're a teacher. You, you don't want to have a secret discipline code that the kids don't know or don't understand. Let them plainly know exactly what it is you expect. And if they don't do it, always address it. Never let it go by. And, you know, if you don't do it that way, what's going to happen is you got a problem with this teacher. And then two months down the line, when you start doing observations and you've been in their room 15 times and everything was great. And then you get to the observations and you start, you know, giving them bad observation scores. They're going to want to know, well, why'd you come in my room 10 times before? And it was all okay. And now all of a sudden you're writing me up, you know, don't, don't do that. Don't, you know, if you're going to walk in there and let it go 10 times, you better let it go when you go in there and do the observation. It's not fair. So be honest with them, straight up honest. Uh, if they come in your office and they need to talk and you're, and, and you're in the middle of a sexual battery investigation, you know, tell them. Say, look, you know, I know you need to talk, but I literally cannot stop. I have to do this investigation. You know, I have to have it done before the day's out, before I send this kid home. You know, I have to be, tell them, tell them the truth. Because if you don't tell them the truth and you just tell them, I don't have time, get out of here they're going to turn around and they're going to think you don't care or they're going to think that you know you're not going to do anything when they have a problem uh, and, and they're going to get mad anyway so why not tell them the truth if they get mad at the truth then they get mad at the truth but you, you know you have to be honest with them don't tiptoe around their feelings don't you know and it seems mean sometimes they're like well i don't want to be mean it's not being mean you know it's that we got a job and we have a job that you can you know you're trying to keep kids safe and you're trying to keep the building safe and you're trying you know to keep from violating everybody's rights and you're trying you know that this is a high stakes job and if i can't you know keep it real with people and be honest with them then you know i'm 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 hurting them as well as myself as an administrator so be honest with your with your teachers be honest about what you're going to look for in an observation you know like you have an observation instrument wherever it is that you teach or wherever it is that you work um, or wherever it is you're an administrator you have an observation instrument and it probably has more stuff on there than you can actually observe you know our observation in georgia was so big you know, we had to split it up and do, you know, we were in the rooms all the time. We were observing teachers, you know, eight and 10 times a year. Uh, in some places they observe them more than that. So you're in there all the time. So if you're going in there to observe a particular thing, you need to let them know exactly what it is you're looking for to help satisfy you and give them a score that they want. You know, tell them straight out, if I see this, you're, you're good to go tell them <laughs> so why keep it a secret i would tell mine you know if you see me walking around with that green clipboard people are getting observed that day you see that green clipboard you better be on your toes why not you think they don't figure stuff like that out be honest with them tell them you know you see me with this clipboard right here you know or you know you see this if you see me do this then i'm probably doing that you know i, I would tell them you know don't expect them to read your mind don't expect them to just know what it is you want you know tell them be honest so that's another thing and kids are the same way in the classroom they want to know exactly what the rules are and what you're going to do about every time they do they want to know where the line is where's the line well what what's okay for me to do and what's okay not for me to do, or what's not okay for me to do they need to know that it helps them 
understand what their position is in that classroom. So you are the same way as an administrator. Help the teacher know where they stand with you. Help them know what it is they need to do to keep their, their job. Because you want them to keep their job because you don't want to have to hire somebody else. You want them to be successful because if they're successful, kids are learning. So help them be successful by being honest with them. All right, guys. Um, I think I'll stop at those two. And if you like the education videos, if you're one of the people, and most people on my channel probably are here for that. I know I do fishing and I do all these other things. You know, if you don't like those, don't watch them. That's fine. But if you're here for the education videos, I do have a playlist for the education videos. And there's a playlist called, if you look on my YouTube channel, called The Last 45 Days. And that was the last 45 days that I was an administrator, that I was still working. And when I got down to my last 45 days, I did a video every day for, uh, for YouTube for my last 45 days. And some of those are pretty funny because it is like in real life time, you know, it's, 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 it's while I was still working. So, uh, if you like these videos, go back and watch those. You'll kind of get me during my actual real working time. Not like now where I'm sitting in traffic. So watch, go back and watch those. And, uh, thanks for watching guys. And, and if you're a teacher, uh, you know, don't, don't quit. If you can, <laughs> if you can get by, you, you know, if you can get by another year or you can get, you, you want to get to the 30 years. You want to be able to retire and to draw your pension and to enjoy, you know, the early retirement and stuff like I've been able to do. You want to get to that. And I know, you know, it's about impossible now, you know, compared to the way it used to be. But there are still lots of people that can teach and that can go through and they know how to navigate the system and they know how to deal with the kids and all that kind of stuff. And uh, I do want to encourage, you know, if, if you can keep at it, don't quit. Uh, now some people, just, they just can't. They have to stop. And I understand that too. There's lots of those. So either way, you guys have a good day. Thank you for watching Nichols Retirement Empire. And uh, I'll see if I can get out of this traffic. This is ruining my retired retirement right here. This just this right here. <laughs> see you guys later. Bye. GoPro, stop recording.